Hey everyone, you're with Tom from Ludicrous Feed. Thank you so much for joining us today. In this video, I will be providing information about Tesla and electric vehicle charging in Australia, current to April 2023. The aim of this video is to keep things as simple as possible for the average new consumer. If you have anything you'd like to add with regards to what has been discussed today, please feel free to leave a comment below. Let's start by distilling all electric vehicle charging in Australia into two broad categories, namely AC and DC, i.e. alternating current and direct current. In very simple terms, a DC charger is generally much faster than an AC charger. If you are on a road trip, for example, on a highway, you would be seeking a DC charger over an AC charger because they are much faster. If you have some time up your sleeve, if you need to stop for a couple of hours, for example, or if you're charging your vehicle overnight, then AC charging is much more appropriate. As a Tesla owner, you can access Tesla superchargers and all non-Tesla DC chargers. So that's basically almost 100% of all DC chargers in Australia currently. Now you'll note that I placed a little asterisk next to the word all on the last line of this slide, and that's because there are some chargers, i.e. Chardemo chargers, that are not compatible with some Tesla vehicles in Australia, i.e. Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. There is an adapter for Tesla Model S and Model X. At present, less than 5% of DC chargers are Chardemo. Conversely, as a non-Tesla EV owner, you can access all non-Tesla DC chargers, but not the majority of Tesla superchargers. So at the time of this post in April 2023, Tesla is running their supercharger pilot program for non-Tesla EVs. There are five locations in Australia and they're currently all in New South Wales, namely Tamworth, Dubbo, Holly Dean, Bathurst and Naruma. It seems Tesla has picked the quieter supercharger locations to test the feasibility of this program and the hope is that they'll open up more locations as time goes on to non-Tesla EVs. Again, I've put a little asterisk next to the word all, because if your electric vehicle has a CCS2 port, you cannot use a Chardemo plug. Okay, so the major benefit of DC charging is that in general, no adapters or cables are required. And a little asterisk again, and I'll go through that in one moment. But first, I want to go through these pictures. So the first picture on the left shows a CCS2 port in a Tesla Model 3. The vast majority of new electric vehicles will have a CCS2 port. Notable exceptions include the Nissan Leaf, which has a Chardemo port, as does any electric vehicle with the Toyota Lexus platform, and also the legacy Model S and Model X vehicles, which are fitted with a proprietary Tesla Type 2 port, which can receive Tesla superchargers with Type 2 ports. They can also use CCS2 ports if there is a Tesla fitted adapter. The second picture is of a Tesla supercharger. This is a version 2 Tesla supercharger with two plugs, as you can see. If you've got a Tesla Model 3 or Model Y, make sure you select the top plug, which is what the picture shows, and you'll be able to plug straight into your Tesla Model 3 or Y. If you've got a Tesla Model S or X, you can use the bottom plug, which is a proprietary Type 2 Tesla supercharger plug. If you're at a version 3 supercharger, and you'll know it's version 3 because there will only be one plug, the CCS2 plug, as depicted by the third image, then you can plug it straight into your Tesla Model 3 or Model Y. Model S, Model X users will have to use their Type 2 to CCS2 adapter. Again, another reminder that non-Tesla vehicles cannot use the majority of Tesla superchargers except for the five in the pilot program discussed earlier. Tesla superchargers, of course, are quite well marked, and they all pretty much look like the second and third pictures. And the final picture on the right is of a generic CCS2 plug found at almost all non-Tesla DC charger locations in Australia. You can plug this into any electric vehicle with a CCS2 port and any Model S or X vehicle with the appropriate CCS2 adapter. There is no CCS2 to Chardemo adapter that I know of in 2023. So here are some examples of DC chargers in Australia. The first picture in the top left corner is of course an example of a Tesla supercharger station. I've not yet come across a Tesla supercharger station with less than three stalls. The remaining images depict the most common brands of non-Tesla DC chargers in Australia, starting from the second row, NRMA with their trademark blue. The next one is Jolt, and you'll normally find them in conjunction with electricity distribution boxes. 
The next picture on the right is of the BP Pulse charging units and BP are starting to roll out their charging stations across their service stations in Australia. Along the bottom row, the first one on the left is ChargeFox with their trademark orange. The middle picture in the bottom row is EV and they're depicted by their trademark turquoise colour. And finally, a well-known brand but a new player in the EV charging space is Ampol and you'll generally find their amp charged chargers in their petrol stations. Okay, let's go through some of the apps you'll need to download for your mobile device in order to access these DC chargers. Another benefit of the Tesla Supercharger Network is that they're literally plug and charge. No app is required. If you're a Tesla driver, your credit card details are already stored in your Tesla account, so you'll be billed after each charging session. However, if you are a non-Tesla EV owner and you'd like to access one of these five Tesla Supercharger locations that are in the pilot program, then you'll need to download the Tesla app, set it up with your preferred payment method, and use the app each time you want to start charging. As for the non-Tesla DC chargers in Australia, this is a snapshot of the apps that are currently downloaded in my phone. The first icon on the left is PlugShare, and this is a user-populated charging directory with address details, images, and comments from previous users. If you're an electric vehicle owner, I highly recommend this app. The second app in the top row is ABRP, otherwise known as a Better Route Planner. This is a planning platform for electric vehicle owners driving between one destination and another. You can set parameters such as vehicle driven, number of passengers, and amount of baggage carried. You can also set desired start and end state of charge of your vehicle, as well as other parameters such as climate, road condition, and usual driving speed. And from there, the app will tell you where to stop and how long to stop for each time. Clearly a must-have app for any EV owner. The third app on the top row is the My NRMA app, and currently in 2023, you do not require an app to access the NRMA charging network. However, the NRMA has stated that in 2023, they will be releasing their pricing schedule. The next three apps, ChargeFox, EV, and Jolt, pretty much run off the same platform for their respective networks. Those apps feature real-time monitoring of charger location and availability, as well as their respective pricing schedules. Ampol AmpCharge has their own platform, but the concept is very similar, as is that for BP Pulse. If you do use DC chargers often, then I do recommend getting an RFID card for some of these networks, for example ChargeFox and EV. This negates the need to log into the app each time. They're also handy in situations where cell coverage is unreliable, or when Wi-Fi is not available. And here's a handy tip, you can actually piggyback multiple providers onto the same RFID card. So these are the current pricing schedules for DC fast chargers in Australia, and they're generally billed per kilowatt hour. Tesla has a two-tier pricing system, a cheaper price for its owners as well as non-Tesla EV owners who are members, and a more expensive fee for non-Tesla EV owners who do not take up a Tesla membership. ChargeFox and EV generally price their DC fast chargers at 60 cents per kilowatt hour for 350 kilowatt fast chargers, whereas it's 40 to 45 cents for 50 kilowatt chargers. And as mentioned previously, the NRMA is currently free. I've placed a little asterisk next to the ChargeFox pricing because if you are a member of any of the motoring associations, you'll currently get a 20% discount with ChargeFox chargers. Also note too that as mentioned previously, the NRMA is currently free for use of their chargers, but in 2023 they will be releasing a pricing schedule. So the all important question comes down to how fast do EVs charge at DC fast chargers? There are three main factors determining the speed. One, charger supply in kilowatts. Two, the car's charging max speed also in kilowatts. And number three, how big is the car battery size in kilowatt hours? In Australia currently, the speed of a DC fast charger varies from 25 kilowatts all the way to 350 kilowatts. Tesla superchargers are either 125 kilowatts or 250 kilowatts, depending on whether they're version 2 or version 3. You'll find out how fast they are in the car's navigation system or in the Tesla app. As for the non-Tesla DC chargers, have a look at their respective apps for their charging speed. The maximum AC and DC charging speeds also varies between the different vehicle manufacturers. This is a screenshot from the Hyundai Ioniq 5's specification sheet. You'll see that the maximum AC charging speed is 10.5 kilowatts, highlighted in green, and the maximum DC charging speed is 350 kilowatts, highlighted in red. I suggest looking at your EV's specifications for these numbers. Here's an example of a DC fast charging curve, comparing the charging speeds between common EVs in 2022. The blue and green lines at the top of the curve represent the Kia EV6 and Hyundai Ioniq 5s. And you'll see that the 800 volt battery architecture featured in those vehicles tend to hold their charging speeds 
better than the other vehicles. However, what you'll see in common between all these vehicles is that their charging speeds tend to drop very dramatically after about 80%. Because of this well-documented fact, when you're on a road trip, most EV owners will charge to 80%, as often it's not worth waiting for the last 20% of the vehicle to charge. So here I've got some real-world examples from my own experience charging a Kia EV6 Model 3 Long Range and a BYD Atto 3 from about 20% state of charge to 80% state of charge at 60 cents per kilowatt hour. So in the first example, the Kia EV6 took 22 minutes to charge 52 kilowatt hours, costing me $31. The Model 3 Long Range took 33 minutes to charge 47 kilowatt hours, costing $28. And the BYD Atto 3 took 40 minutes to charge 41 kilowatt hours, costing me $24. So as you can see, charging times do vary between different cars. But of course, the cost of charging is determined by how much energy is put into the vehicle rather than how long it takes. Alright, so that's DC charging done, let's talk about AC charging now. So AC charging can be helpfully broken into two levels, level 1 and level 2, and you can consider DC charging really as level 3 charging. There are two types of level 1 AC charging, 10 amps and 15 amps. The vast majority of power points in Australia are 10 amps. And with a 240 volt supply, you'll get a charging rate of 2.4 kilowatts, or somewhere between 12 to 20 kilometers an hour, depending on your car's driving efficiency. If you have a 15 amp power point, and they're often differentiated by a longer earth pin, with a 240 volt supply you'll get a charging speed of 3.6 kilowatts, or somewhere between 20 to 30 kilometers an hour. I've got examples of level 1 AC chargers on the right, including the Tesla Universal Mobile Connector in the top left, as well as a generic level 1 charger on the right. Okay, so let's discuss level 2 AC charging, where charging speed is limited by the weakest link. So what is the weakest link? Well, there are four main determinants to your car's charging speed. Number one, the supply to your house or the charger location, whether you have single phase or three phase coming to the home. Number two, whether you've installed a single phase or three phase EV charger. Number three, the speed of your car's onboard charger. And number four, if you have an untethered EV charger, the speed of the EV cable, whether it's single phase or three phase in order to access that charger. In general, single phase charging is 7 kilowatts, which will get you between 35 and 55 kilometers an hour, again depending on your car's efficiency. Maximum three phase charging is often 22 kilowatts, although please note that many new modern EVs only have a top AC three phase charging speed of 11 kilowatts, which is somewhere between 55 to 85 kilometers an hour, depending on the car's efficiency. Notable exceptions are the first generation Tesla Model S, which can charge at 22 kilowatts if they have a dual charger installed, and also the Renault Zoe, which can charge at 22 kilowatts as well. And also legacy Model S and X vehicles can charge at 16.5 kilowatts. And as mentioned previously, check your vehicle's specification sheet for the onboard charging speed. And of course, the cost of AC charging at home really depends on the price of your electricity tariff. I'm with PowerShop on a specialized electric vehicle charging plan. I'm paying 7.49 cents per kilowatt hour between midnight and 4 a.m. Monday to Friday. I'll leave my referral link in the video description below. Of course, if you're charging from solar, then the price will be the lost opportunity cost from your feed-in tariff. At this point, I would draw your attention to the fact that there are some smart EV chargers out there that can utilize excess solar production during the day to charge your EV. These smart EV chargers can be, of course, hardwired into your home, or there are also some software solutions as well, such as the Charge HQ Smart EV Charging app, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. So a common question I get asked is, how fast is EV charging? And is it worth upgrading to a level two single phase or three phase specialized EV charger? So to help you with your decision, I've placed an example here of how long it would take to charge 10 kilowatt hours worth of energy. 10 kilowatt hours is approximately 50 to 80 kilometers of range, depending on your car's efficiency. And that's about how much an average Australian would drive per day. If you're paying 15 cents per kilowatt hour, then 10 kilowatt hours of energy is $1.50, no matter how fast you charge your car. A level one 10 amp charger, such as a Tesla Universal Mobile Connector that can plug into any standard household power point, charging at 2.4 kilowatts, will take about four hours to charge 10 kilowatt hours. A seven kilowatt single phase level two charger will take 85 minutes. If your car can charge this at 11 kilowatts three phase, then it'll take 55 minutes for the same amount of energy. So as you can see, no matter what scenario you choose, you can comfortably charge your EV overnight if you drive as much as the average Australian. What EV charger you choose to purchase really depends on your requirements. 
I've taken these points from an excellent article written in solarquotes.com.au and I'll leave a link to that article in the description below. The price of an EV charger will be determined by the features included, such as whether it uses excess solar, whether there's integration with your home battery, whether load balancing is required, such as in a multi-unit dwelling, the length of the charging cable will increase the price of the charger, whether you need app or network connectivity, whether you need extra security features such as a PIN in a multi-user situation, and whether you need OCPP compliance for it to be integrated in a future network potentially. I recommend checking out some of the charges available at evse.com.au. Don't forget my coupon code TeslaTom gives you 5% off site-wide. I've also posted a video on one of their entry-level EV charges. I'll also leave a link to that in the video description below. And to finish up, let's talk a bit about public AC charging. And as Tesla owners, you can access all Tesla wall connectors and all non-Tesla AC chargers. There's an asterisk next to all for non-Tesla AC chargers because there are some older Type 1 AC chargers that you'll need an adapter for. For all other EVs, you can access all non-Tesla AC chargers. And again, the asterisk is for the older Type 1 AC chargers for which you'll need an adapter for. And some Tesla wall connectors. And I say some because there's no way of telling whether the Tesla wall connector in front of you has been configured to be able to charge all EVs or just Teslas. It really does just come down to trial and error. And yes, as this picture shows, there are so many EV chargers out there, and they do vary in their accessibility and ease of use. Many public AC chargers remain free to this day, particularly in shopping centers. However, I have seen some charging up to 50 cents per kilowatt hour. Many AC chargers around town are increasingly becoming untethered, which means that you probably should carry a Type 2 EV cable if you want to use some of these chargers. I'll leave a link to those products in the description below. And finally, if you're planning to do an EV road trip where you know there won't be much access to specialized EV chargers, then I do recommend carrying a multi-tail portable EV charger to access some of the sockets around camping and showgrounds in Australia. I'll leave a link to that product and also my video in the description below. So, in summary, DC chargers, in general, no adapters required, except for the examples I've highlighted previously. They are more expensive than AC charging, but you are paying for the speed and convenience on a road trip. AC chargers, how much you drive each day will determine what type of AC charger you install for your home. And to access public charging, I do highly recommend buying a Type 2 EV cable for your car. Well, that's it from me, Tom from Ludicrous Feed. Thanks for watching this Tesla and EV charging guide updated for April 2023. Until next time, happy charging.